We are back with part two of our NFL free agency coverage here on the Props Network podcast. I am your host, Steve Clark, and I'm joined once again by your friend and mine, Joel Walkowski. How you doing, Joel? I'm doing great. We did the amateurs in the AFC yesterday. Now let's talk about real hard-hitting smash mouth football. The <laughs> NFC, the National Football Conference. And just to our listeners, to our viewers who are seeing my mom's beautiful living room, wow. <laughs> and I, I did find some good sports content that you might want to follow along. I watched some old all-star games from the NBA on YouTube last night. And wow. yeah, pretty interesting. On two separate occasions, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar forgets his goggles at the hotel and <laughs> plays without them. <laughs> Like NBA is also making NBA Game Pass free right now. Yeah, Donnie Sengstek and I, we talked a little bit about the NFL Game Pass um, becoming available. Yeah. So we're, we're trying to figure out a way to bet on old random games. <laughs> That you just don't remember the outcome of. Yeah, we're gonna have our we're gonna have our moms put on a game for us, and we're gonna <laughs> do money line bets. That's a great idea. Yeah, maybe we could talk to the Props Network soon. <laughs> betting on, uh, you know, Browns Bengals from 2011. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dalton, Whedon, let's get through this quarantine. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit more about free agency today. We're going to cover the entire NFC, as you mentioned. Um, but let's talk about the draft. The NFL announced that the draft will happen on April 23rd through April 25th. Obviously, there's going to be some changes. They're trying to figure out a way to do the broadcast. I'm assuming it's just going to be like in the ESPN studio. They're going to announce the picks from there, and then maybe they'll – They'll show highlights and then maybe they'll have footage from the the draft parties at the players' houses from like people's cell phones that they'll run or something. I I don't really know what they're gonna do. And is it possible that this entire coronavirus thing is karma for the NFL wanting these young black men to be brought to their new owners via boat? Yeah, that's <laughs> and then when they said that it was like Yeah, thank God that's not happening. Yeah, that would have been a little bit too much of uh, poetic imagery, especially given the new CBA. So thankfully, yeah, right. that is not happening. We're looking for silver linings here in the body of the quarantine, and that might be the only one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like these guys are already essentially being auctioned off to owners. <laughs> yeah, we don't need a boat. In we the don't need to throw them on a boat. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. It would be cool. I, I would be in favor of a jet ski system. Then you yeah. only have one person you can isolate. Put Joe <laughs> Burrow on a, a jet ski and ride to the stage. I, I do hear, we talked about the AFC yesterday, but I, I did hear rumors that the Miami Dolphins are actually interested in trading up with Cincinnati for the first oh, overall pick. Yeah. I don't know if Cincinnati would be willing to get rid of their, I mean, what would it take? Probably two or three firsts. To yeah, get maybe, that first. maybe five, 18, and then their second rounder. Because the Dolphins, you know, they gave away Tunsil. They gave right. away the safety, uh, Minka Fitzpatrick, to Pittsburgh. So they do have three first-round picks. Right. Forgive me, I was wrong about how many picks the Raiders and Colts had yesterday. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me, Props Network. It's 32 teams. It's hard to keep track of. Yeah. <laughs> the war chest for all of them. The draft is still a month away too. I mean, I, we need it. I love the draft, even on years where there's other stuff going on. I watch all three days of the draft and I am just glued to the TV this year. I think it will be like the Super Bowl of sporting events for at least the first half of the year. Oh it's yeah. Be great. Absolutely. And um, if we're talking about upcoming sporting events, empty arena, WrestleMania hosted by Rob Gronkowski, <laughs> sign me up. Rob, without a crowd to play off of, with a microphone in his hand, sounds wonderful. It's like how like Fallon and Colbert are doing shows from their house with no audience to laugh at their monologue jokes. Yeah, it's kind of like Fallon doing shows from his house with more natural comedic ability. Yeah. <laughs> but similar amount of alcohol intake somehow. Right. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, um, for all those people watching, it, it, just a little New York comedy secret to all our viewers at home. Jimmy Fallon has a guy that follows him around and stops him from getting too drunk. <laughs> oh, nice guy. Nice guy, though. Gotta yep. love um, happy St. Pat's, Jimmy. Yeah, happy St. Patrick's Day. All right, I, w- I won't blackball people who I'd like to perform on their show someday, so let's get into free <laughs> <Yeah>. agency. <laughs> Um. Yeah, we covered AFC yesterday. We're going to cover NFC today. But there were a few AFC moves that happened in the last 12, 24 hours or so. Uh, Chris Harris signed with the Chargers. Ooh. He got significantly less money from the Chargers than he would have gotten from the Broncos. But I guess he just wanted to make the move. The Jaguars signed former Cardinals defensive end Rodney Gunter to a three-year deal. And the Bengals signed Mackenzie Alexander, cornerback. Okay, That's so kind Chris, of all that happened. So Chris Horace, Chris Harris is the biggest one that moves the needle, and like the Chargers. I mean, we talked about their over under. Are there kind of three very good players in their secondary now? You got Casey Hay- Hayward, you got Derwin James, and now put in. I know he's old, but throw in Chris Harris to the mix. I don't mind yeah. that at all. It's pretty solid defensively. Just depends on what they'll do offensively next year. Um, all right, let's jump into the NFC. Let's start with the NFC East because they have. One of the bigger moves that's happened this week in the NFC came from the Philadelphia Eagles when they traded for Darius Slay, sent a third and a fifth round pick to the Lions and immediately signed him to a three year, $50 million extension. As a Lions fan, you a little bummed that Slay is gone or was this the right move? Um, I'm not, I am bummed about losing Darius Slay, the player. I'm not sad about losing Darius Slay, the Twitter follow. (laughs) Like he has the worst social media of any professional athlete. Like yesterday when the Lions signed Desmond Trufant, Darius Slay immediately tweets, congrats, my guy. Hope that speeds up my trade process. (laughs) So over the over the past couple of days, Darius Slay and Stefan Diggs, two rivals, have just been talking about how they need to get traded immediately. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 interesting. The Eagles also went out and signed Javon Hargrave, defensive tackle, signed Rodney McLeod, and they re-signed Jalen Mills. So their defensive they look pretty stacked on defense right now. If Darius Slay can come back, he had kind of an off year last year, didn't he? Um, I, I think he had a good year. I think the Lions actually played a very hard scheme for for especially defensive backs. The Lions played more man to man than any other team in right. the league. And what you saw was a really great defense for three quarters, and then they would just run out of steam as right. the game wore on. They're they're being asked to do more than any other secondary, so they gotcha. let, let a lot of teams back in games. Like the Lions, at one point they were two six and one and they had led in every single game that's insane that's terrible i think they blew leads in 10 of their losses last year (laughs) i think that has to do with the defensive scheme entirely yeah geez louise and and i love slay the player i don't buy rumors of his decline because he if you even watch his tape from last year. He had a great game against Amari Cooper, a great game against Stefan Diggs. And even if you watch their catches against him, you see he had pretty good coverage. And you throw in the fact that he's probably the be- has the best ball skills of any cornerback in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, Eagles fans will remember Carson Wentz's first career interception was to Darius Slay to seal a Lions victory over the wow. Eagles in 2016, I believe. Look really nice. So... And the Eagles fans, I mean, I don't know how well how much you've been following this stuff on Twitter. They have been clamoring for Howie Roseman to make moves. In the in the comments of every Schefter tweet, it's just Eagles fans <laughs> losing their minds. They want they need secondary, they need receivers, right. and they need to address they address their biggest need so yeah, far. Absolutely. And I think the Eagles could potentially still land someone like Brashad Perriman or Robbie Anderson in the next few days because they do need receiver help bad. Yeah, and they're moving forward. They they actually, the compensation to Detroit wasn't too bad. They only gave up third and fifth round picks. Right. So this is a great receiver draft, which yep. Mike Lombardi yesterday was saying, a great receiver draft is code for it's not a very good draft overall. Yeah. 
But you get any of these guys from any of the Alabama receivers, Ruggs, Judy, uh, T. Higgins from Clemson, like a lot of guys project to be WR1s. Yep. And if Philly can fit the, fill that role, they'll be in good shape. Yeah, their over under win total is nine and a half. They're the favorite to win the East. Oh, they're the favorite. They're the favorite at plus 120. The Cowboys are plus 130. So they're kind of on equal footing there, but they are slightly the favorite. Okay, well, I mean, they, they do have a great offensive line. They still have a lot of skill in the defensive line. So, and, you know, hopefully Carson Wentz kind of returns to form. I know he's had so many injury issues, but, geez, Eagles fans, he, he they love Carson Wentz, and I'd like yeah. to see him get his moment. He needs to just be healthy for a whole year. I would love to see him just play every single game of a season in a postseason and see what happens. Um, they have also have one of the best coaches in the NFL, in my opinion, and that – gives them the edge over their division. Although we will see what happens with the Cowboys with their new coach. And let's move on to them. They re-signed Amari Cooper to a five-year, $100 million contract. They franchise-tagged Dak Prescott. They re-signed Blake Jarwin, their tight end. They re-signed Sean Lee, Anthony Brown, their cornerback. And they picked up Gerald McCoy, defensive tackle, to a three-year deal. So they've made some moves this so far. Yeah, but look, I like uh, they made all the smart smart moves. You would uh, love to see Byron Jones find a way to keep him, but they just couldn't give him the cap figure. The Cowboys, they're all in on this current team. Yeah. And they might not have too much flexibility moving forward, especially once they have to pay Dak. Yeah. I mean, mean, even the one year contract for Dak is pretty exorbitant. It's a big cap hit. Yeah. Yeah. Dak's probably going to get thirty five million dollars a year, which is kind of a lot. (laughs) (laughs) yeah their win total is also nine and a half like i said they're plus 130 so they're kind of a toss-up with the eagles i think there's not good enough value there to take either one of them because just because it is such a toss-up i don't know which one of them will win the division the cowboys based on skill alone i feel like should win the division but they just haven't Mm -hmm. made it happen in the last couple years yeah and that offense should be good i don't think losing witten to the Vegas Raiders affects them. Blake Jarwin is someone who, if you were to have the Cowboys on last year, like that guy is constantly making plays, so they were able to re-up him. And I, I'm actually very high on their second wide receiver, Michael Gallup. I think he yep. displayed a good separation ability, excellent hands. And if you throw in, you know, the dialogue about the best running back in football always changes. Is it Christian McCaffrey? No, it's Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, he, he does everything. He can be a receiver and then he can probably get you about five yards per carry. So the offense should be efficient. And then, man, you want to talk about players I fell in love with. Like I didn't enjoy a single player as much as I did Amari Cooper last year. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, he's like he, he turns the possession receiver position into a work of art. I'd love watching his footwork, his, his, the way he just positions himself for the ball is a rare ability so it's good they locked that down absolutely um yeah i i I mean if they have just any semblance of good coaching next year they should win the division is my biggest issue i think mike mccarthy's a replacement level coach he won a super bowl in green bay but you know that's kind of he had peak aaron Rodgers, so i don't know how much he had to do with that and rogers he might be kind of an antisocial guy, but he didn't like playing for him whatsoever. Right, right which says something. Um, all right, let's yeah. move on to the. Do you the think that New secretly York. means that Mike McCarthy's Aaron Rodgers' biological father? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyone he doesn't get along with is indeed part of his family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, let's check out the New York football giants. They placed the franchise tag on Leonard Williams. They made a couple of big moves on defense. They signed Blake Martinez to a three-year, $30 million contract. Uh, cornerback James Bradbury to a three-year, $45 million contract. Uh, Tyler Fackrell, another linebacker. And they, grab, they re-signed David Mayo. They also signed Cameron Fleming, an offensive tackle. And for tight end, as their second-string tight end, Levine Toilolo to a two-year deal okay so i will say i don't i think blake martinez is washed i think he if you look he has a he has just great tackle numbers but i think that whole defense is kind of engineered where 
the linebackers just get the tackles. Everything's routed to him. I don't think he's a transcendent player at all. I do like the Bradbury signing, and but it just seems like they really overpaid for Leonard Williams. If you're going to look at the contract <laughs> plus the draft capital they gave to him, like yeah, the Jets weren't in on that guy. They right. didn't need to trade for him at last year's deadline. They were not playing for anything. So it's more inexplicable front office moves from Dave Gettleman. Yeah, it seems like he's doubling down on the Leonard Williams move, being like, I swear this was a good idea. I'm going to tag him just so you guys realize how important he is to our team. It's Yeah, I agree that it's a silly move to place the tag on him. And they, I, yeah, Go ahead. So I, I don't think they win six games this year. That's their over-under win total. I can't I'm gonna go the under like you see football is evolving the way these coaches view their offenses they view their team building and Dave Gettleman just seems to be stuck in the past yeah. you see he's going with slow footed linebackers defensive tackle who can't really play I don't see them <laughs> really being able to move the ball down the field in a modern and innovative way that'll keep them relevant but luckily this is this def- this division has some pretty stagnant offenses in it. Yeah, that's true. And at least they have one of the more exciting players in Saquon Barkley. Daniel Jones doesn't look terrible. Um, I guess their offense, their like receiving targets are Golden Tate and Evan Ingram, so that's fine, I guess. But yeah, I can't imagine them winning six games next year. I'd probably it- take the under. Those are the right targets to surround like a Barkley centered offense with like Ingram was awesome last year and Golden Smart. Tate in, in terms of players who are adept at working underneath. He's probably one of the best in the league at that. Right. Just give him the screens, the six yard outs, and he has a propensity to make things happen. I will say that if we're going to talk about like the stupid reasons that make it fun to cheer for a bad football team. I <laughs> loved every time Levine Toy Lolo made a play last year. There's just a beauty in just going Toy Lolo. <laughs> <laughs> I think Giants fans will really enjoy. <laughs> Get out of there. Um, all right. Last team in the East, the Washington Redskins, which is painful to say out loud, but that is their name. Um, they franchise tagged Brandon Scherf, their offensive guard. They signed Thomas Davis so we can reunite with Ron Rivera. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they can go to senior nights together and play bingo. They re-signed John Bostic, the linebacker. And then they signed Kendall Fuller, which was their big move of free agency so far, the cornerback. Ooh, a cat. Yeah, I, I brought everybody here. The cats, the animals are happy. The cat is so glad she's not in a one bedroom apartment anymore. I can imagine. Yeah, she's just knocked everything off the walls. She's truly destroying this entire house, but she's having a great time doing it. Um, we talk about Washington, and I think this is the team that is probably the furthest from resolved right now. You see them being involved in every quarterback rumor at the moment. I right. saw them linked to Jameis Winston this morning. I've heard them linked to Cam Newton for pretty obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. And there's still Dwayne Haskins in the mix. Right. Threw a beautiful deep ball at Ohio State. Yeah. But doesn't look... I mean, last year he didn't look great. It was his first year. I would give him time. They invested a lot in him. He seems to have the arm talent. And with just a good coach, it'd be interesting to see what he could do. They also signed... A guard to protect him, Wes Schweitzer. You know that's a guard with that name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And there, there's never going to be a Schweitzer that plays quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there is like a there was a bias against African American quarterbacks for a long time, and um, you know, if you sound Germanic like that, there's probably a similar bias. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and I, I, the Washington, they're doing a complete reboot. I think it's kind of a better version of when the Detroit Lions hired Patricia. They need someone to take control, show them how to be a winning football team, and Rivera is the guy. Yeah. I think it's you could probably pencil in Chase Young for them right now. And I will say Washington has a better in-stadium experience than I anticipated. I went down there 
back in November when we were allowed to have fun. And I was so I thought the field was beautiful. I loved the marching band. And I got to see Dwayne Haskins take his famous selfie with the fans. Oh, so, nice. <laughs> yeah, we Jeff Driscoll couldn't pull that one out for me. But <laughs> what can you do? What can you do? And also change your name, please. Please, please. Please just change your name. They have a five win over under win total, which I'm going to lay off of because I five wins, I feel like is a bad team is capable of winning five games. So yeah, I'm, that, I don't know. I think you could probably, I'd probably take the over there. I, I like Rivera. I like Chase Young a lot. And their defense was feisty last year. Right. And, you know, that young receiver, his name's escaping me right now, but he was just Terry awesome. McLaurin. Yeah, yes. he's incredible. Yeah, wonderful rookie. And they've got the pieces to move forward. Definitely. Let's go now to the NFC North. Um, oh. We'll start with the Packers. They didn't do a whole lot. They signed Christian Kirksey, linebacker from the Browns, to a two-year deal. And they signed right tackle Rick Wagner, the former Lion. That's pretty much all they've done. Yeah, they got rid of one aging, ineffective lineman in Brian Balaga. They brought in another aging, ineffective lineman <laughs> to take over his place. And the the Packers, they spent all their money last season. Like, they brought in both the Smiths. They yep. have a historical track record of never spending any money in free agency. Yep. So they broke the mold last season, and I don't think they're in a position to do anything meaningful this year. Yeah. I don't know that they need to. They the way they bolstered their defense last year, they're in a pretty good spot if their offense can keep up this yeah, year. But, yeah, but the defense performed re a little bit well. But I thought teams were able to consistently move the ball on them last season. Yeah, and like I know they went thirteen and three. Okay, she knocked down a curtain. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad cat. We, yeah. Get, Sorry, she knows we're going to talk about the kitties soon, so she, she's all riled <laughs> <getting> up. Excited. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Duck the cat. I guess I guess she's the producer of this podcast. Yeah, this podcast. Duck is the two producer. on camera appearances. She gave me a little bit more light from knocking down the curtain. So <laughs> thank you for that, Duck. I, I did think that uh, I think we talked about it a few weeks ago when I was on the first time that I thought San Francisco kind of exposed. The yes. game plan and the preparation. So, I think Lafleur really has to step in, make some make some adjustments for me to feel confident in the Packers moving forward. Definitely, they have a nine win over under total, and they're the favorite to win the division right now, which makes sense considering how many players the Vikings have lost. It seems like since last season. Yeah, and the Vikings they did have a lot of free agent losses. Trey Wayne's was just a wonderful player in his prime for them. Linval right. Joseph, he's a little bit aging, but defensive tackles don't necessarily hit that wall. And Xavier Rhodes, Everson Griffin, they're losing four starters total. However, that Stefan Diggs trade gave them enough to just totally restock. Right. Like as someone who roots for a team in their division, I was so happy to see the Kirk Cousins extension. I knew yeah. the Vikings cap situation and for to see them get four picks for Stefan Diggs was just disheartening to see. So, yep. I would probably take the Vikings to win the division at, at plus 155. Yeah, it's I I see the value there and the, they got a first back from the Bills for that Stefan Diggs trade. So they got really good value back from that trade. They also signed nose tackle Michael Pierce. And I could see them going out and trying to get a wide receiver yet in free agency like a Robbie Anderson. This could be where he lands, depending. I guess they might wait for the draft, but. Yeah, big candidate to wait for the draft. The Vikings love taking receivers in the first round, whether or not they're good or not. So yeah. <laughs> since, it's, since there's actually good receivers, they might consider taking one this year. Right. Controversial idea. But <laughs> they love yeah. guys like Laquan Treadwell. So we'll see if they really screw the pooch on this draft. Yeah, they cut him and they brought him back. And, you know, <laughs> you are giving that kind of money. Did Kirk Cousins need to sign an extension? He had a pretty big contract already in place. Like, Yeah, I don't know. I I, yeah, had... that seemed premature to me, too. 
Yeah, he had two years left, and it's not like it's like, oh, okay, we're gonna pay the fifteenth best quarterback thirty five million dollars a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Um let's go now to the Bears. We're saving these Lions for last. The Bears, they signed Jimmy Graham to a two year deal. He hasn't been good in years, and he's still making eight million dollars a year at the tight end position. It's Kind of baffling. I guess it's just the name recognition. They signed. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. And you see the Bears across the board were putting big money behind past performance. Uh, combined $86 million to Jimmy Graham, Robert Quinn, and yep. the Jag- Jacksonville Jaguars, they were stuck with Nick Foles. They had nothing no plan they're still paying some dead money but to get an asset for them was actually pretty good gming from the jaguars front office yeah and i can't believe how much the the bears have dedicated in their cap to players who i don't think move the needle for them like robert quinn's been great but that's a five-year 70 million dollar contract to a 30 year old pass rusher right yeah, and they released Leonard Floyd to clear some cap room to, I guess, bring in Robert Quinn, who is just an older pass rusher. It's interesting. And they also and, re-signed Danny Trevathan to a three-year deal. Yeah, and I mean, the the pass rush will be the absolute backbone of the team. So if they can generate, like, the best pass rush in the league with Quinn and Mac for a year, maybe they can eke out nine wins. But I don't like anything I see from Chicago. Specifically, and, that quarterback that's going to be between Nick Foles and Mitch Trubisky. Like, yeah, I was talking with uh, a friend of mine. I think you play basketball with him, Ethan SP. He's a former college football player. He's oh, really? a diehard Bears fan, and he says over his life, you can really kind of see a little bit of racism in how the Bears handled the quarterback position. Interesting. Like, Like, there's never been an African-American starter for the Bears, not since Cordell Stewart, and that he only got the job in a last-minute system. And you're going with Nick Foles over Jameis Winston, Cam Newton. And honestly, I don't like the Bears team, but I was terrified of them taking uh, using a third-round pick on Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. That was my biggest fear of the entire offseason because he's kind of like a good Mitchell Trubisky. Yeah. go in this specific Matt Nagy offense, I think you would see just the 2018 version of that offense consistently moving forward. Yeah, but no, they went with Nick Foles, and they're paying him a good chunk of change, too. So Um, much money. It's, yeah, I can see the Lions usurping the Bears this year. Yeah, I mean, the Lions, uh, are are we on to... Let's Detroit go to the Lions. Lions. They, they've made a lot of moves. You want to talk about some of what they've done? Well, I am a little confused. <laughs> my, my biggest concern was team speed on the defense. Yeah. And I don't think that was addressed. We were able to get Desmond Trufant, who is... That's a great pickup, I think. It's a great pickup, but he's 30 years old the first week of the season. I looked okay. it up. I did find out we have the same birthday, so if you want to come split the big Walkowski with me <laughs> that's on board for you, Desmond. Welcome to Detroit. <laughs> and then just the, just the, you get made fun of for signing only former Patriots, and we've signed three Patriots starters to our defense. Right. We've got Harmon, we've got Jamie Collins, and we've got Danny Shelton. There yeah. are third. 30 other teams we could go to. I mean, Jamie Collins is 30, but he seems to be a transcendent enough athlete where that can make a difference for you. Yeah. And like, sure, the Lions made some good deals, but all these are just plugging holes they already lost. Like, we signed Vitae. I'm not going to try and say his first name. (laughs) Hala Pulu Vitae Vitae. Yeah, that's pretty close. And like we signed him to five years, fifty million, but we just got rid of the overpaid Rick Wagner, so that puts us in the same position at right tackle. Yeah. And then we, sure, it's great to have Duran Harmon and Jaron Curse, but we also got rid of Quandre Diggs for no real reason at the trading deadline last season. 
Yep. So, and, you know, signed defensive tackles, but we lost a better defensive tackle. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think the linebacking core has potential to be good. I think the draft, if you put it, if we go with Jeffrey Akuda in the first round, it could be a pretty good cornerback core. I do like our nickelback, Justin Coleman, quite a bit. So there's three good corners. There's a lot of depth and safety. And you see the Lions, they're trying to build a secondary as the biggest right. asset of their team. Yeah. And now they're more equipped to play man-to-man. Assuming we take a Cuda, I see six talented defensive backs. That's great for the scheme that Patricia runs, right? Yeah, because it's... You need to rotate them in and out. Like right. just the limits of human endurance are dark. Yeah. By <laughs> Patricia's defensive game planning and it's physically impossible to keep up. Um, how do you feel about this tweet from the former CEO of the Browns, the former president of the Eagles, Joe Banner? People have been focused on Houston and Bill O'Brien, but Detroit has been equally bad in its decisions. Losing top quality players for very little and overpaying and signing questionable talent. Yeah. Agreed? <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> but could you make the argument that they're having a worse free agency period than the Texans? No, because I think the Texans are kind of definitively worse. I think the Lions have just kind of treaded water in this right. situation. Yeah. I thought their I think their roster is actually pretty talent laden, but I think it comes down to the coaching staff, the game management, and not being able to put a good 60 minute product on the field. I'm so glad that all the rumors of them potentially getting rid of Stafford are buried and gone cuz I love Matt Stafford in Detroit. I love him and he loves playing in Detroit and the thing is we didn't want to pay the dead money which is what Jacksonville did to get rid of Nick Foles. Like Jacksonville lost 16 million on their cap to get rid of Foles. Insane. <laughs> you know, it's possible the Lions move on from Stafford, but I think it'll happen after this season. Right. So, who is to say? Yeah. Um I was a little disheartened to see Devin Kennard get released. Like he's yeah. going to be a nice piece wherever he signs. We really developed him into a pretty good pass rusher. Yeah, And after Jamie Collins signed, he had a tweet that was like, welcome to Detroit, Jamie. Let's get it together. Oh, no. <laughs> Six hours later, he was cut. Do you think the Lions can win over six and a half games? Oh, absolutely. I think we have the second best quarterback in the division. We've got yeah. a great wide receiver. And if you are going to just – you were trying to build this running offense, and I think – just putting anyone behind Frank Ragnow should be pretty effective. Yeah, totally. They're plus 800 now to win the division. Yeah, and, so. he, and you you know I'll be on that. I yeah. Will be, uh, <laughs> like, immediately, but find me a bookie, Sam, and I will be all over that. But, you know, it's I, you see the Lions do all this to address the defense. And if I were to just look at my history as a Lions fan, I know the defense will come together and the offense will fall apart. Right. Because last yeah. year, no matter who was under center, we were able to put points on the board. Yeah. And then lose the lead in the fourth quarter, like you mentioned before. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I, you know, I don't know any much about these tackles we signed. We have Nick Williams, Danny Shelton, but Patricia and Quinn see how they fit the scheme. So, yeah, I'm out. I'm a little worried that I'm, well, I'm very worried they're taking Derek Brown with the third overall pick. If they were to trade down with the Chargers, Carolina, and pick him at like the six or seven spot, I'm fine. But I do think there are three game-changing defensive players in this draft. And if you put in Chase Young, Jeffrey Akuda, or Isaiah Simmons in this team, you're going to see that speed issue totally addressed. Like Isaiah Simmons, I'm falling in love with him to Detroit. I just think he could be Troy Palomalu 2.0. Yeah. I think he's I think he's my preference for the pick. We'll trade down with Miami, get 5 and 18 and then take uh Isaiah Simmons fifth overall. That sounds great. You got yeah. it all figured out. Just talking on this podcast, I feel I sound like such a Clemson fan. Every Clemson player I just praise and praise. And praise. <laughs> Yesterday, I was going on and on about Trevor Lawrence. Here I am going on about Simmons. It's a great and program. This is amazing. 
I didn't know where Clemson was until two years ago. <laughs> uh, did you? I so I did because my sister lives in South Carolina, but otherwise, no. Their freaking state isn't in the name of their school. What are they thinking? Yeah, there's there's nothing in nothing you can really figure out there. Clemson could be it's like Stanford. Where are these schools? Yeah, but Stanford, they at least put the Redwood tree on their logo. Yeah, so you get you a, a general hint. idea. You're like, that's oh, true. that's a that's a big tree, Bay Area. Yeah. I, there are no tigers in South Carolina unless Woods is playing Pebble Beach. <laughs> um, all right. Know, Pebble Beach is the one in California. What's what's the big course in South? I don't golf. Sorry, Sam. I don't golf either. Yeah, I have no idea. This podcast, though, is brought to you by thepropsnetwork.com. Visit thepropsnetwork.com for all the latest betting news and the best bonuses from the top legal betting sites. You can get a sign-up bonus of up to $1,000 at DraftKings or two free $10 bets at Unibet. If you just want to try it out, you must be 21 years or older to bet. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER now. Joe Flacco has officially been waived. I just got the alert. Um, so... Oh, he failed his physical. Ooh. But the the physical for Joe Flacco is just like, hey, can you throw the ball 75 yards? <laughs> <laughs> they don't look at any other part of his body. So <laughs> Joe Flacco, he might just go out and hit the campaign trail for, for Biden. So <laughs> that could be a good use of his time. Those Delaware boys, they stick together hard. Okay. NFC South. The New Orleans Saints are the front runners to win it. They re-signed Drew Brees to a two-year, $50 million contract. He was apparently contemplating retirement, and then he decided he wanted to come back. They re-signed defensive, tack defensive tackle David Onyemata to a three-year deal, and they signed Malcolm Jenkins to a four-year deal, $32 million. Uh, welcome home, Malcolm. And you welcome see, back. like, the Saints... They they actually do team building better than most franchises. They're still coasting off their historic draft from three years ago that just filled their roster. Yeah. <laughs> they got they got Lattimore and Kamara in the same draft as well as a few other contributors. So they're still young. Yep. It's still a young core, and then they have a sixty year old midget as their <laughs> quarterback. <laughs> But they have the best wide receiver, arguably, in the league. Absolutely. They have, their defense looked pretty decent last year. They've got a decent uh, pass rush. So, And this, I guess now that Brady's in the division, they do have some semblance of competition for, the, for winning the division. They're minus 110 to win the division, so pretty much even odds if you want to take the Saints there, which I think I would do right now. Um, yeah, you could take the Saints, but I, I don't like rooting for the Saints anymore. Like, it feels <laughs> like they've been stagnant. They've taken all these heartbreaking postseason losses, and it just feels like there's an emotional weight that's going to be put on that team. And they're going to they're they have to crumble <laughs> from that eventually. Like, no team is strong enough to withstand all these blows. Like, they're truly doing some. They've been the best team in football two of the last three years and have nothing to show for. Yeah. It. Yeah. Like this run is similar to the early nineties bills with right. less postseason success. <laughs> yeah. And just, you want to be, they got jobbed on two of the occasions. Yeah. Right. Minnesota, LA Rams. Like that's a lot to withstand. And then you, you kind of saw it last year when Minnesota came out and they just, out physical them in a playoff yeah. game. Yeah. I was at the uh, the famous LA Rams, New Orleans Saints conference. No. I was you there. Were? I was maybe one of 50 Rams fans in the entire dome. It was wild. Like the energy the whole time, the Saints fans were rowdy. They were having a good time. They were like being nice to me. I wasn't like outwardly cheering for the Rams. I was wearing a Rams jacket and I was like just being polite and sitting there. Um, but after that play happened, the energy completely shifted. People were being like super nasty to me. Like if I like showed any sign of happiness over anything, they would just like cuss at me. They'd be like, you don't like, you don't deserve this win at the very end of the game after Zerline kicked that field goal to seal it. 
like a dad with his son shook my hand and was like, congratulations. But no one else would like look me in the eyes. It was such a weird environment to be in. Is the Superdome, or is that an angry fan base? Because it seems like just from watching on television that they're a pretty affable bunch. They were super nice up until their team got entirely screwed over by the refs. Like the entire game, they were nothing but kind to me. But then, you know, they got very mad, very yeah, angry. Like- we should probably do a tutorial here at the Props Network of how to leave the stadium <laughs> yeah. as an opposing fan who wins. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I was a different sort of person, I went to Lions Eagles week two last year. I've, I've been to Lions Raiders saw win. And if I were a different type of person, I could have found a dozen fist fights at either yeah, location. Exactly. You got to <laughs> smile, you got to diffuse, and you got yeah. just got to go. Oh, I'm just glad to win. Thank you very much. Yeah. I, I'm just going home. I I just had a lovely Sunday. That's yeah. all I know. <laughs> so I was staring at staying in an Airbnb that was like on the other side of Bourbon Street from the dome. So I like took a taxi home, and the taxi driver. The whole time was complaining to me about the game. He was like, we got robbed. Like the city's going to like go crazy. And I was like in the backseat trying to act like I was from New Orleans and I was a Saints fan. I wasn't telling him anything about me being a Rams fan. And then he drops me off in my Airbnb and he goes, you don't have to pay. Like, it's fine. But then I gave him $20 because I (laughs) felt bad that my team just (laughs) screwed him over. (laughs) It was a weird night. It's the right move. Did you you go, went down there with some bros? Or was that your best like so I went, person? I went with my fiance. We'd never been. We just like went for because the Rams won the game the week before against the Cowboys, and I was like, wow, this might be my only chance to see the Rams in the playoffs. Like the tickets were only like two hundred and fifty bucks. Oh, amazing! Yeah, so I was like, let's do like a long weekend to New Orleans. So we spent the weekend in New Orleans, and then. I went completely alone to the football game and sat alone amongst all these Saints fans. Yeah, and going to a sporting event alone can be pretty fun. I mean, I've done I it. I liked it, yeah. Best. Yeah, it's great. Um, and the New Orleans, best casino in the country. Shout out to Harrah's. Oh, Always wow. a good time. They're the only casino that pays out as they should on blackjack. Okay. So. The blackjack odds have been kind of ruined by big casinos, so Harris is actually keeping the standard going in in New Orleans. Shout out to Harris. Maybe you guys should uh, sponsor the pod. Yeah, absolutely. We'll we'll go down. Um, I'll, I'll shout out to you next time I'm in Atlantic City. I'll go to your other branch. I'll yeah. Step from the Wild West Casino, which is where I usually <laughs> go. Oh, Atlantic City. All right, let's move on. The Atlanta Falcons. They released Devonta Freeman and placed a tender on Brian Hill. So it seems like they're moving forward with Brian Hill as their running back. They released Desmond Trufant, which we is mentioned that, earlier. Is that the Brian Hill? He was uh, the first coach of the Orlando Magic. Yeah, that's the same guy. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. This is, this is his second act. He's become an NFL running back. <laughs> hey, we all, we all embrace retirement different ways. <laughs> uh, they traded for Hayden Hurst. They gave up a lot for Hayden Hurst. They gave up a second and a fifth round pick for the tight end. Um, and at that point, don't you just want to re-sign Austin Hooper? Yeah, right? I don't. I guess they didn't want to pay him $10 million a year and said they wanted to get rid of half of their draft picks. Yeah, just watching the Falcons over the past decade, it seems like they value draft picks a little bit less than most franchises. They've always paid exorbitantly to move up in the draft. And you see that them do like a second and a fifth for a tight end. Yeah. That's a pretty high price to pay. It is. Uh oh, my ride's here. Can you hear me? <laughs> Classic joke. We are legally obligated to make that one, having done comedy for a period of time. <laughs> they signed Dante Fowler. This is a big move. They grabbed Dante Fowler to a three year, $48 million contract. He was just with the Rams last year. He's a good pass rusher. I think that's a good pickup for them. He's a good pass rusher, and he was good in Los Angeles, but he was pretty disappointing in Jacksonville. So you're going to want to see that. Atlanta needs to have a plan in place for how to control him off the field, how to best use him on the field. So, you know, I'm, I don't know what the infrastructure is 
right. in Atlanta. Is Dan Quinn still the head coach there? Yes. <laughs> okay, he rallied to save his job the last few weeks of the season. <laughs> they just, for some reason, he must have something on the owner. He cannot get fired. He, it, not, he 99% won a Super Bowl, so yeah, yeah. they got the complete way. Um, their over-under total is seven and a half wins. I'm not going to touch it. I have no idea what to expect from this team. They have the talent, especially on offense. With yeah, and it, seems, and... it seems like Atlanta has historically been a pretty unfun team to bet on. They've always burned me, so I will continue to stay away from the Falcons until Matt Ryan is no longer the quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's he, he congratulations. You have a boring Philip Rivers under center. <laughs> um the Bucks made the biggest move of any yeah. team when they signed signing Jason Pierre Paul. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> Tom Brady still has not signed his contract as of one o'clock on Thursday because he's having trouble getting a physical because of the virus, apparently, is what's going uh, on. And, you know, given his age bracket, he is susceptible. He is at risk. He is in the 4% mortality rate age bracket. Um, but, yeah, they also signed Jason Pierre-Paul to a two-year deal. They franchise-tagged Shaq Barrett, who had a great year last year. Yeah, uh, uh, too good of a year last year. I think Sus- we'll see some regression this year. A suspiciously good year from Shaq Barrett. And, you know, I was – I think I kind of – I disparaged the Brady signing yesterday. I've maybe talked myself into it a little bit more now that I imagine Mike Evans in the Rob Gronkowski role. Yeah. (laughs) It's like Mike Evans is basically a tight end. He's got a very similar build and skill set to Gronkowski outside of the blocking. Yeah. So he'll be running those Gronk routes. You'll see... Chris Godwin being the possession guy. So the passing offense should work. And it's, I think it's fun to play for Bruce Arians. Yeah, absolutely. If you, and if you want to, if you're Tom Brady, if you're going to a new place, no coach has a better track record of working with aging quarterbacks than Bruce Arians. Yeah. Kurt Warner, Carson Palmer, they were both able to extend their careers with this scheme, with a similarly talented receiving core. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, at the plus 170 odds at the nine wins over, I mean, the Bucks were a competitive team last year, and if their turnover margin gets corrected, exactly. they should easily hit nine wins. I agree. They won seven games last year with a quarterback that threw 30 interceptions, I think, and a kicker that I think cost them at least one game, which will always happen in Tampa. That won't get fixed with Tom Brady. But I think they can. I think they can hit nine wins. I see them winning ten win, ten games, and possibly getting that wild card spot. One of those wild card spots. One of the three wild card spots now. Yeah, and I, this division, um, you can. There's going to be two playoff teams from it, if not three. Honestly, yeah. there's great quarterback play up and down the division, and you're starting to see some pretty well run franchises now that Carolina is getting their shit together. Yeah, so Carolina obviously signed Teddy Bridgewater to a three-year, $63 million deal to be their new starting quarterback. They announced that, so this whole saga happened with Cam Newton. The Panthers said they were giving him permission to seek a trade, and then Cam responded on Instagram and said, you guys forced me into this trade, and then that now there's bad blood between them. They're trying to get rid of him. But did you see Cam's response on Instagram, how he wrote it? I, I didn't see that response. I'll, I'll go look at it right now. You need to go look at Cam Newton's Instagram right now if you've never seen it. He writes with these insane letters. He has like different looking letters that he writes with. Oh, wow. It's He does that with every single post that he makes. And he it's I don't understand. He it's like he's the Zodiac killer. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, all all the videos are of him either working out or eating Krispy Kreme donuts. So <laughs> he's actually living the same life as me during the quarantine. So I got to appreciate that. Yeah. And I like Cam, but his Instagram is out of control. Just write nor like how long does it take to make his letters look like that? 
He he's got a personal assistant whose only job is modifying the letters. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he's out of Carolina. We'll see where he lands. Uh, there's talk that maybe he goes to Los Angeles, even though they've kind of decided that they want to stick with Tyrod. Maybe Washington because of the Ron Rivera connection. That would be fun. Washington's that would be fun. Not every quarterback right now. And I think Cam kind of deserves better. Like he yeah. had a great run. He was unfairly maligned in the media. Yeah. And then he's just bat- battled injuries kind of ever since that moment. Yep. And you know, I think it's it could be the end of the line for for Cam. I mean, he's the exception to these quarterbacks staying relevant in their late thirties. He's just such a big framed athletic guy. He relies on totally different skills than most people at the position. So Okay. He it, yeah, I don't know what to think about him. I think that if he goes to the right system, he will be a like top 12 quarterback but it just depends on which system he goes to i think bridgewater actually slides in nicely in carolina with he doesn't throw the ball deep but he doesn't need to in carolina he needs to dump it off to christian mccaffrey he needs the underneath routes so i think he could fit in nicely in the carolina offense yeah and i think you're good i'm i'm loving the over on this team five and five and a half wins and you know they're going to be able to move the ball very efficiently bridgewater is a fine quarterback at a decent price point. So they should be able to build out the roster and you might take uh, Matt rule a year or so to build the culture. But I think there's a lot of things in the organization with the owner and the coach that I like. And it seems like this owner is just putting so many resources into building a football team. Yeah. They also signed Steven Weatherly defensive end. They signed Justin Burris, the safety. They re-signed Trey Boston. And then they signed a guard, John Miller. So not a lot of big splashes other than the Teddy Bridgewater signing, but five and a half wins, I think they can get there. They have a player that's the perennial MVP candidate. They can move the ball on offense with him. So I think they, yeah. And they were over that last year, and I, I don't think they got worse. The division might get, might have gotten a little better with Brady coming to Tampa, but right. they'll be there. There are adults in the room. The pieces on the offense they seem like they'll work together nicely. Yeah, and I don't know how Matt Rule is on the defensive side of the ball. I know Baylor had a good defense, but it just seems like the Panthers year in year out have a lot of talent on that side of the ball. Totally. They Let's, they did lose their top corner to the the Giants, but other than that, I I think I'm yeah, the Bradbury, enough. yeah, that's true. So that yeah, that's something to look at for sure. How they're gonna make up for that? Uh, let's go to the West NFC West, the uh, San Francisco my least favorite is, team, the Niners. Yeah, why? I, I I think my favorite bet going into this season is bet the Niners to miss the postseason. Super Bowl regression hits every year. I don't see a great quarterback. I don't see great skill position guys. And getting rid of DeForest Buckner to Indianapolis, Mm -hmm. that defensive line was key to everything. That's true. And they they had four great linemen. And they're just just by subtracting Buckner, they're not going to get the same penetration. There's going to be more attention put on to Armstead, who they resigned, and Bosa. Yep. Yep. I yeah, I could see that. I just think that they are such a complete team that losing Buckner, and the thing about the Buckner trade, they traded him to the Colts for the 13th overall pick. They got him at seven four years ago. They pounded him into the ground. He played so many snaps in the last four years. He's an all-pro defensive tackle. He's incredible. But now they're flipping him like a used car, and they're getting a 13th pick. They're only moving six picks back after spending a seventh on him. So I don't hate the the move for the future, but for next year, I do think it will impact their, their defensive line play, obviously. Um, but, yeah, they did re-sign Eric Armstead to a five-year, $85 million deal. Yeah, and the Armstead, they had to lock him up. It's them choosing who they're going to pay. They pick yeah. to pay the younger guy. That's the logical move. Yeah. But Kyle Shanahan, for all, he's a great offensive coach, but great offensive coaches get figured out a, a, 
eventually. There will yeah. be an adjustment to him, and he'll have to come back to that. And I think that'll happen over the fly over the course of this next season. But I think it's enough to really take the 49ers out of this race in what's shaping up to be a very fun division. It's going to be a fun division next year. Um, the Seahawks, who I would pick to win the division at plus 250, they haven't done a ton, but they don't really need to, I don't think. They re-signed Jaron Reed, their defensive tackle. They signed an offensive lineman, B.J. Finley, and they brought in offensive tackle Brandon Shell. So they're they're bolstering that offensive line. They signed Bruce Irvin, who may still have another good year left in him, maybe. They brought in Greg Olson, who also might still have one more good year in him, possibly. Um, and that's about all they've done. But I think I think they're going to do more. I think they really liked Jadevian Clowney. I think they're a good candidate for Indomitian Sue. And what do they really need? I mean, Russell Wilson is a franchise in and of himself. Yep. So plus 250 to win the division over of nine. Has Russell Wilson ever been under nine wins in a season? Oh, that's a I great question. So. Uh, let so, me look. And you see the Seahawks. I mean, all that matters in the NFL is that you have the coach and the quarterback figured out their top tier in both. So you see these questions about the 49ers. Yeah, they have two first round picks, but I'll take Wilson and 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 Carroll over Shanahan and Garoppolo every day of the week, especially on Sundays. So the Seahawks, Russell Wilson's first year as a starting quarterback was 2012. Their worst season has been nine and seven. Every other season, they've won 10 or more games. Yeah, Russell Wilson, he is on his way to being a le- achieving legendary status. I mean, he probably is on track to have a better career than Drew Brees. And he could be, of all these like younger guys, he's the one with the potential to join that Brady, Manning, like, yeah. pantheon. Yeah. And they're, he's still young. He could win three or four more Super Bowls in his career. Yeah, absolutely. And you see that he just has an ability to keep plays going and the whole franchise rallies around him. When you have a guy like that, it's so much easier to build your team. Yeah. All right, the Rams, who I'm not thrilled about. They have been... They, did, they didn't do anything until yesterday, and then yesterday they finally started doing some stuff. They... They signed Leonard Floyd to a one-year deal, which I'm kind of excited about. They re-signed Andrew Whitworth to a three-year deal, and they signed former Lion defensive tackle Ashawn Robinson to a two-year deal. Um, How is Ashawn? Should I be excited? Ashawn is great. The Lions, they're very simple in terms of how they draft. They only pick players from the SEC more (laughs) often than not. And you're getting a defensive tackle from Alabama. He is great in the run game, and he's probably the best in the league at blocking kicks. Oh. No one, yeah, no one has blocked more kicks over the past two years than Ashawn Robinson, and it's probably like three or four a year, it seems like. Wow. <laughs> and that's a fair figure for him. For $8.5 million a year, he's given you ideal size, but I don't think things look good for the Rams as a whole. No, so we lost Corey Littleton, we lost Michael Brockers, we lost Nickel Roby Coleman. Like that's a lot of our better defensive players. We're also <laughs> looks like trying to trade away Todd Gurley and Brandon Cooks. So it's going to be a completely different team next year. I'd be thrilled if the Rams were able to get anything back for Todd Gurley. Like I would even take a fourth round pick at this point. Yeah, are you going to be yeah, you. I don't think you'd get anything, and I think you'd still have to pay a decent amount on that contract. Probably, yeah. The Rams, you know, they're kind of victimized by trying to create a team in a new marketplace and going to the Super Bowl with Goff and Gurley. Yeah, it's great, but then you have to lock these guys up and in, in just generating public interest. Right. And giving a running back a big contract doesn't work in today's NFL. Nope. Brandon Cooks is a nice player, but... He's been in the league over 10 years at this point. He's This is his third team. Yeah. And I don't think he's getting traded for a first-round pick again. No. There's no there's no way. I think there's interest. The Bucks apparently are interested in getting 
Todd Gurley, which doesn't make a ton of sense to me. They should. Melvin Gordon is a free agent right now. They and could Melvin just go out Gordon, and grab him. Melvin Gordon's going to be available cheap. You can probably get him for eight million dollars a year. Right. And you know, if you're able to get rid of that Gurley contract, Melvin Gordon is a great move for the Rams. Yeah. That that I would love that if the, if they could trade Gurley away and grab Gordon, that would be fantastic. Yeah, he's kind of um, like Gurley with cartilage in his knee. Yeah. <laughs> but their over under win total is eight and a half. I think they're going to win eight games. So I'm not going to I'm not going to bet against the Rams just because it feels bad. But pound that, that under if, if yeah. you're listening. If you if you don't have rent this month and you need it moving forward, the Rams under is a way to get it. Eight and a half wins seems high in a very good division. And I yeah. think looking at a last place finish here. They yeah, they have six games next year that are none of them are gimmies. Like they could lose all six games. The Cardinals are now good enough that they will be competitive in every game in the division, I think. So let's go to the Cardinals now. They jumped up to a seven win over under total from all the moves they've made. They signed Jordan Phillips, defensive tackle. They obviously got DeAndre Hopkins in a fourth round pick, got rid of David Johnson. Um they placed the transition tag on Kenyon Drake, so they'll probably end up keeping him, which is awesome for them. I love Kenyon Drake. He was they, fantastic last year. He was incredible the last in, in the stretch last year. He is so good. And when he's he with a competent to, coach, oh, man. And, and we don't know if that exists in Arizona. That is the question to this um, assemb assembly of talent they have here. Yeah. I don't know that I believe in Cliff Kingsbury, but I think the pieces are in place. You got the tackle sorted. You've got a good running back, and you've got two amazing receivers. Yeah, and they like, re-signed Larry Fitzgerald as well. Yeah, and if if you want to develop a young quarterback, this is how you do it. You gear an offense around them. You give him the right weapons, and now let's see what Kyler Murray's ceiling is. It's his second year, and I can't wait to see it. I mean. Plus 750 to win the division. This is a this is a good candidate as a ten dollar bet for me. Right. Like second year quarterbacks are always the story of the season. In 2018, it was Mahomes. In 2019, it was Lamar. And 2020 could well be Murray's. Tyler. Yeah. I'm a little worried that he's getting too hyped up. Like everyone is saying that he's gonna be next year's Lamar. And I don't know that it's fair to put that expectation on him. But I do think, well, so his MVP odds, if you would have taken him to win MVP just a couple days ago, he was plus 3,300. At, right after the DeAndre Hopkins trade, he's plus 2,500. Pretty significant leap there. Um, the Cardinals went from 30 and 31 to win the NFC to 20 to 1, 70 to 1 to win the Super Bowl to 50 to 1. So they're they're putting a lot of stock into these these uh, acquisitions in the off season. Yeah, but that's also Vegas manipulating public perception. Absolutely. Like every Cardinals fan, because I don't think there are many. Like I've been I've spent some time in Arizona. It seems like it's Broncos country, oddly enough. Yeah, weird. <laughs> so any Cardinals fan, if they happen to exist, I think they would shell out for any of those bets. Yeah, absolutely. And they it's also. Fun Oh, go it's ahead. fun to see, but what's K Kingsbury's track record? Is he going to be able to make the in-game adjustments? Is he going to be able to yep. conduct winning practices week in and out? Uh, the jury's still out on him. We'll see. Yeah, but it's exciting. It's a new coach. It's a new quarterback. But they also signed uh, Devon Kennard yesterday, the Lions linebacker. Nice player, and it's, it's it's this is kind of rare to see a player get cut and still get a raise. That never yeah. <laughs> happens in the NFL. Right. <laughs> Congratulations, you lost your job, but you somehow got more money. Good yeah. for you. Um, and then they re-signed DJ Humphreys, their offensive tackle. So pretty good free agency period so far for them, and they have a good draft pick because um, they didn't have to trade it for DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, now they have like – what three of the top 50 picks like they're in they're in a good position to just turn the franchise around in a very interesting way yeah oh that's all the teams i wish there was more nfl to talk about 
They, there's no more NFL to talk about. We'll, we'll be talking about slam ball transactions in a couple days here. <laughs> yeah, I guess now the only thing we can look forward to. I mean, there are still some big names out there that will land somewhere. But so, now it's kind of looking towards the draft. Who are the biggest names remaining? Well, I know there's Davion Clowney. I know Von Bell. Let me see what else we got. Free agents. Melvin Gordon and Dominican Sue. Yep. And then Robbie Anderson. I mean, we still need to see where like Jameis ends up and Cam. Like those are big, those will be big landing spots. And, you know, maybe we can do another round early next week and we will figure out what else has happened. Yeah. Once more stuff has happened, we will bring it to you because what else are we gonna talk about? Yeah, Robbie Anderson, the attention of the sports world is now on you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's rough. Australian rules football started today. Oh, good. The interest in that. <laughs> they went out. They the first game was like four forty-five a.m. Eastern time. So huge. It's going to be huge in America. They the teams went out to an empty stadium. Those stadiums hold like a hundred thousand people, completely. <laughs> it's eerie to watch like i watch the highlights of them coming out onto the field and some of the plays and it is just weird to watch yeah when when italy was still up and running it was fun to bet on empty italian soccer games yeah i feel like (laughs) australian rules football offers the same opportunity and if you need if we need our fix there's a good season of survivor going on right now Love Survivor. I, I've been out for 15 years. It's nothing but champions this year. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm back in. Yeah. So that's how I'm getting my sports fix moving Survivor forward. Survivor is sports. Let's be real. It's, it is sports. So yeah. Survivor and The Bachelor are both bigger sports in this country than hockey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get kicked out of Detroit for saying that. Uh oh. <laughs> I could be in some trouble here. All right, I think that'll do it. Thank you for joining us. And thank you, Joel, for taking the time to talk again, taking time about your busy schedule. Yep, had to carve it out, move some meetings around. But, you know, anything for the Props Network. I'm certainly not going to watch five more episodes of Survivor over the rest of my day. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Everybody stay safe out there. Don't go into big groups of people. Practice social distancing. Wash your hands, all that. And we will talk to you soon. We'll see what comes next week, but we will have a podcast for you next week, I promise. And just tune in and see what we can figure out to talk about. So we'll talk to you then. Thanks, Joel. Later, Steve.